Hey, so a few episodes ago, I may have mentioned that my shed is going to have a bit of a transformation this winter because it's untidy, it's not organised, and it never has been, <laughs> frankly. Um, so I bought this shed secondhand in December 2014. So I got the allotment September 2014, got the shed that Christmas time, and then put it up not long after January in the new year of 2015 which was a long time ago. And you know what, my shed has never really been what it could have been. And it's been a great place to sort of shelter from the horrible winter weather and make tea and film some of my vlogs in the winter time. Um, but it's never been what I kind of want it to be now, which is a potting shed, you know? Um, and it's just never been very organized. I never put any proper shelving up or storage solutions. And you know, over the summer and spring months when everything on the allotment's a bit chaotic and we're planting out, we're sowing seeds, we're weeding and everything's a little bit frantic, keeping the shed tidy is kind of like the least of my priorities. Um, but I don't think it's helped that I've never had the right sort of system in place to keep it tidy. So that's what this video is all about. And what we're gonna do is I will show you around the shed as it currently stands. And then we're gonna talk about a little bit about my plan and do some DIY. And hopefully it's gonna become a nice potting shed. All right, so first things first, let's have a look at the shed and how the situation currently stands. See how much work I've got to do. Um, but also full disclosure, this is a lot tidier than what it was a few weeks ago because for a long time, I couldn't actually step foot in there. It was that bad. So, you know, just being honest with you guys, but uh, let's, let's have a look. So if we go in and just start from left to right, shall we? That would be the easiest. Um, that's my ferro stick for lighting fires. And I love my shed because it's got so much glass. Let me just go wide angle. I've got three windows on each side. Got some flowers drying up there. Uh, let's just woo, see what's down in this corner. That's my that's a moss pole that I actually made for my house plants that is now in here apparently. I've got a metal bread bin. That's where I keep some of the bird seed. Bag of sand randomly. Some fleece and some netting. Basket of wood for making my little fires. And this little is actually like a desk chair. So you can pull that out and that's got, oh my God, it's, it's very wobbly. <laughs> As you can see, a bunch of junk, hand tools and whatnot. Uh, more mess down here. And as we go up this little basket, it's got more of my sort of regularly used hand tools. In the back corner, I've actually put wallpaper on the back because um, when I bought the shed, it had some graffiti sprayed onto it which I probably should have just painted over, but I put some wallpaper in because why not? <laughs> I've also got some prints because I like artwork and uh, this one's made by Holly, who I actually now work with, which is pretty awesome. And a few other bits that were sent to me from viewers, which is rather nice. Oh, my RHS volunteer badge. Um, so yeah, that's how that section is. Over here, we've got my cabinet, which it's actually quite good because it keeps the mice away from things, which is why I like the cupboards. Um, up here, what have I got? Some flower presses, first aid kit. Let's have a look. I know you want to see what's in here. Um, okay, I've got paper bags for storing my seeds that I collect. More seeds. Um, two kettles for the gas stove that I no longer use because I use this instead. My Kelly kettle. Uh, where you make a fire and you boil your water. More seeds. Um, and this was a decoration that the mice started to get to, so I put it in here, <laughs> made out of poppy seed heads. And some of my books. Underneath we've got the tea making facilities, very important. And then the cupboard. What's in the cupboard? In the cupboard is mostly bulky stuff tins of paint, the gas stove that I no longer use, some feeds, I don't even use chicken pellets, don't know why I've got them. Um, yeah, bulky stuff. And if I turn around, I've got two ladders, 
one that I actually use and one which was my grandmother's that I now have some chicken wire and all of my tools which are just thrown in the corner not very organized along with my coats as for the outside of the shed I actually love this style because I have this lovely little porch front which means I can stand out here if it's particularly rainy and um, take shelter but still be outside and I've got a little overhang and on the other side I actually capture all the rainwater and there's a bit of junk down there too so that's how it is it's not very organized bit of a mess lots of clutter and stuff that I don't need so the first job is actually to go through everything decide what I want to keep what I want to throw out what I want to donate and then think about how I'm going to actually store that in the future can I put it on the wall can it be hung does it need to go in a cupboard you know things like that so what's the plan well this area here this back wall is going to be a long potting bench so that I can sow my seeds and look out to the wildlife corner um, it's going to have some shelving underneath it and uh, what about the back wall most of this furniture is probably going to go I may keep that bottom cupboard uh, this splits into two halves by the way um, I'm going to have some pegboard along the back on the wall so that I can see my tools and maybe some shelvings on the left hand side all of my spades and things will be hung up along that bottom beam but on the back wall and um, I'm hoping to also have my ladder stored above my head don't know how I'm going to do it but I've seen it done so that's the rough plan but first I need to get everything out of the shed decide what I want to keep and how I'm going to store it and also then take loads and loads of measurements so that I can plan the build essentially so I best get cracking so first of all I had to remove all of the items in my shed and this took a lot longer than I expected it to you know you can squeeze so much into a little six by eight shed and it made me realize just how much I had in here but after I'd moved everything out of the shed I could then take some measurements with the help of my boyfriend and we also drew up a little plan of the workbench to go underneath the windows and with that we took a trip to our local builders merchant to get some wood materials some sheet wood um, which we actually got cut down to size there in store which was really helpful that's all of the shelving and the worktop bench and the pegboard um, because we don't actually have any electric power tools for cutting wood at the allotment or at home using the three by two wood we then made a little frame and this was for the top of the workbench which we actually secured in place to the shed with the support of a few extra beams and obviously we made sure that that was nice and level so that all of my things won't roll around or be offset and then the next job was to put in <laughs> the, um, the top of the table which was my most anxious moment because we got this cut down to size in store and I wasn't sure if it was actually going to fit um, but lo and behold it did I had nothing to worry about and this is um, plywood by the way it's 19 millimeter plywood so very thick and very expensive prices have gone up crazy in the last couple of years um, and I was <laughs> had to go back to the shop and I was wondering you know do builders get excited about new parts like I do about plants I don't know um, so then with some extra wood we put some 3x2 on the back wall and this is me countersinking it which means I'm making a little hole before I drill in the screw and that means that the top of the screw head will sit inside the wood rather than outside and above it. It just makes for a nice neater finish where it's all smooth. We then had to cut a few corners out to make sure that the shelves would fit in line and flush against the edge of the shed. I've got a few weird beams that are in the corner. And as you can see, it was actually dark, or guessing dark by the time we put up the pegboard on the back wall. So the next day I was on my own now and I started to cut down one of the shelves because it wasn't quite the right size, but it fit quite neatly against the other piece that we already had. Uh, so yeah, I was pretty chuffed with that. It was now time to get some paint on the pegboard. So I've gone for cedar red, which is the same color as the outside of my shed. And although it looks very orange and like tomato soup when it goes on, it does dry a lot darker. I then used another piece of 3x2 as a beam for my cut flowers, which I want to dry. So I put in lots of screw hooks onto that. 
Next to the door is where I've now decided to put the ladder because it fits really neatly and my shed isn't really tall enough for it to go above my head like I originally planned. I'd seen that on a lot of American designs and my shed just isn't that big. So I screwed it in a hook and put it into place. I could have used two hooks for this but uh, they actually ran out in the shop so these were the last ones that I had that I was going to use for my spade and my forks so that they are attached to a piece of 4x2 so slightly wider on that back wall and I just screwed those all evenly distanced apart so that they can then hang just above the floor of the shed. It was then actually quite enjoyable to put out all my tools as I wanted them. For the last couple of days I've been adding lots of finishing touches to the shed. I've bought a few new little bits and pieces, I've got it all kitted out, put everything exactly where I want it. So I think it's done guys, it's now time to finally share with you the results of my big shed makeover. So let's step right in and I'll give you the full tour. Here we go, look at it, oh my gosh. We're just going to appreciate it for a moment just how different this looks. So let's have a look back how it used to look. You know, we had so much clutter along this side, so much rubbish and furniture. It took up so much room. It now feels so much bigger. I've got all my tools there along the back and um, I've still kept the cabinet there on the, on the right hand side. But I'm just gonna spin around and we'll start as before, left to right. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Uh, right, on the top there, I've actually got one of my prints, a uh, little robin that somebody drew from a picture I took. Um, I've now put up a little notice board for my jobs and notes that I want to take. We've got some pegboard here with some of my potting essentials. So I've actually got my soil blocker, which I don't tend to use so much these days, but might get back into that. My notebook, uh, my pens for the board really handy place to keep my keys so I don't lose them right next to the door there um, and the pegboard is a theme that you'll see throughout because I absolutely love it. We've also got some string and I've used these baskets as a sort of quick means of getting to the string so I can just pull it from the bottom and snip off however much I need and um, these baskets were actually a little project because first they were actually a bright white colour and I found some spray paint that gives it this sort of, I think it was called aged iron. So it's got a really sort of textured effect to it. So I've just made it a little bit more my own. And as I pan down, I've got my labels, some little pots and more of my pegboard clips. Cause I know for the next couple of weeks, I'm probably going to be moving things around to realize just how I want them positioned. A uh, little notepad there. In this tray, I've got some of my garlic, which is one of my November jobs. I really need to get that planted. <laughs> uh, this shed project's just taken over my life for the last couple of weeks. Um, I've got lots of my potting materials here in storage glasses. I think it looks really nice um, displayed like that. And I've got the labels on as well. This is one of my little hacks. <laughs> my boyfriend drinks a lot of coffee and this was a spare scoop that he had for his coffee grounds and it just makes the best little scoop for putting um, you know your bits and pieces into your compost so that's what I like to use and over here we've got a new galvanized um, trough which I picked up from a car boot sale and this is where I'll keep all my compost when I'm potting and let's just take a moment to appreciate the workbench I mean look at that I can't believe that I've done that, obviously with some help, <laughs> but you know, I'm not very good at DIY, but it, we've done it and I, I just, I'm so, so pleased. Um, you know, I've got all the shelving, so let's just have a little look. Uh, yeah, this dustbin is actually where I'll keep the bulk of the compost and to keep it dry and out of the wind and the wet. Um, it'll go into there. So when I'm potting in the spring, you know, when it's busy time, I'll be able to do everything from in here. And I've got a few of my seed trays and pots up here. Dustpan and brush to sweep down the table. Some more pots. There's a bottle of vinegar down there that's I use to clean the glass and certain surfaces. Oh, and this here is a new toolbox that I picked up. 
also from the car boot sale and if you don't know what a car boot sale is um, I think it's quite a British thing actually um, we don't have big front gardens here so we don't do yard sales which is I think what you guys do in America where you get anything out that you want to sell and put it in your front garden um, what we do is actually anybody that wants to sell anything puts it all in their car goes to a designated field and then we'll display what we want to sell and the buyers will walk around and it's a good place to get a good bargain because it's actually kind of expected that you're going to haggle so if you're a seller you'll mark your price up because you know they'll try and get a quid off it or something <laughs> and so, so yeah I went to a um, car boot sale um, and picked up a few bargains including that toolbox so yes, um, the toolbox came with these two pieces. I bought it for two pounds. Um, that tray actually fits inside there, but I thought this is more of a handy way to keep things that I'm using um, quite regularly so I can just pull it out. And it's got all my hooks and brackets and things that I've been using recently to do up the shed. And actually this is something I still need to do, which is to varnish the plywood, which I'm something I'm a bit nervous about because I don't really want it to discolour or go a bit blotchy or horrible. Um, so I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to get a sample piece of the wood that I've still got left over to give it a bit of a test run before I do the whole thing. <laughs> and let's just pull out the toolbox. Because I love it. Really old fashioned sort of dad toolbox. <laughs> and this has got some more of my spare hooks in. And just general, you know, bits and bobs. I love these little boxes because they keep everything together rather than the old cult cardboard boxes that they were in. And um, yeah, that's all neat in there. And to the side of that, I've got my miniature soil blocker, a little pot with just a rag in it for cleaning. These little pots come in so handy when you're doing things so that your small bits and pieces don't roll away. Uh, some pot feet back there. And further down I've got some more baskets. That's my coir. I particularly use that for my seedlings. First aid kit, again, keeping it low so that if ever a child needs to reach for it, then they can. And just general bits and bobs in there. This is one that I couldn't fit on my uh, pegboard because I couldn't quite figure out how to do it yet. I've got some rooting powder and oh yeah I picked this up from a charity shop one day. Uh, create your own paper pots. Not actually used it yet, maybe in spring. But yeah anything down here that's open is not going to be for seeds or anything where mice can get to it. Underneath is where I managed to squeeze my uh, chicken wire, there's about three rolls of it underneath here. I've also got a spare uh, basket. The paint, the spray paint wasn't such a good effort on this one. I kind of ran out. The, uh, the tin didn't go as far as I thought it would. So yeah, that is the new workbench that I'm so in love with. And then as we go around to the back, <laughs> look at it. I've put up the pegboard, I've got a shelf at the top. Uh, the prints that I love, the bat, I love that he just actually moves around, so I've given them all a bit more TLC. That one's got a frame. The others are funny sizes. I've got my Kelly kettle, the biscuit tin. Uh, what's behind this one? Oh, blood fish and bone. <laughs> Away from uh, rodents that might sniff it out. And um, yeah, if I pan down, we've got a miniature watering can my tea making facilities and I treated myself to a few new mugs because it's probably the most important part of the shed right <laughs> and then further down we've got my handy hooks for my um, my dibber when I'm sowing my seeds and my pair of scissors because this is one of the things I always need and I can never find and just to have them right there <laughs> it's just going to be so convenient when I'm you know cutting bits of string and whatnot uh, so yeah, the masterpiece of the pegboard. <laughs> I love it. I can see all my tools. It's going to keep me so much more organised. Um, you know, I've got my wolf garden ones here. And that's a system, system I'm trying to stick with now. 
where you basically have a pole and then you attach different tools to the same pole. So it saves a lot of space because you don't need, you know, six different long handled tools. You just have one long handle and then fix on the tool. So that there is the wolf garden, empty one. So there's nothing on the end there. And yeah, I've got my broom. This one is actually quite a vintage tool. It used to belong to my grandmother and obviously she passed away early this year. Um, so I now have it and <laughs> it's a really nice, nice old small uh, fork. Um, the spade and the fork, they're all hanging from that beam there. And behind that we've got my more smaller hand tools and I've also um, got this little clip for my gloves to hang them up so I always know where they are and they're not going to get wet or anything like that. So um, yeah, that's the pegboard. Absolutely love it. One thing I did learn about the pegboard quite quickly is that not all pegboards are the same size as in the distance between the holes. And it turns out that there's a 19 millimeter and a 25 millimeter and the 25 seems to be the most popular and widely available in terms of the pegs as well so if you go on amazon and search peg hooks they're all probably going to be 25 millimeter this one happens to be the 19 millimeter so i did make the mistake of buying the wrong hook size um, but that was easily resolved once i realized that it's the smaller size and yeah so i've got everything on the wall now and it's just oh, it's great I also bought these longer hooks which are about 70 mil in length and this meant that my longer handled tools are offset from the back of the wall which they needed because otherwise they'd hit that piece of 4x2. Obviously as you can see in that corner there I've still got a few things to do including tidying up outside but you know the glass does need a good clean and also replacing in some places because um, they are broken um, but down here I've put a smaller piece of that 4x2 wood. These two I did have difficulty trying to figure out how to attach them because I couldn't use the big hooks and I couldn't use my pegboard. So what I've actually done is just put a screw, sorry about the sunshine there, a screw there so they literally just hang on. Um, and behind that we've got the new Wolf Garden rake because my old rake broke. And then under here we've got the same basket box of some seeds and some bulbs. Uh, I don't really store all my seeds in there. The majority of them are in a, a multicolored box. That's just for anything that I really don't want mice to get to in an emergency. <laughs> and on the right hand side, I've kept the bottom calf of the cabinet, which I haven't really gone through if I'm honest. It's still pretty much the same, tins of paint. Um, that kind of thing. I just really wanted somewhere that's keeping rodents and mice and things away. Got a couple of uh, pelagoniums, my basket with some straw flowers in, uh, a new little watering can. I already have this one at home, I just wanted another one because it's a great little mid-size and it was reduced at home base so I picked it up for a fiver. And above that we have <laughs> the new rail with some flowers drying and yeah this is just gonna be perfect when i'm you know wanting to prolong the seasons and especially for straw flowers these are the poppy heads that i've had in here for a couple of years now they're more here for decoration than anything but i keep meaning to go back to my jewelry making where i use a lot of dried flowers so yeah one day <laughs> and then the far peg is actually for my coats I've got two coats on there one's the waterproof and a spare pair of gloves, I believe. And then we've got the ladder hanging up in the corner. I was gonna put it above the head, but in the end, I realized that that's just a lot easier. And we've got my basket there, grandma's basket, with a few bits of wood and burnables for when I make my cups of tea. This is a little something that I actually made, <laughs> uh, which fits onto the wall and it's gonna be a place to sort of basically hold my phone so that I can either record myself or just watch or read something or, you know, just to keep it away from the work surface, which is gonna get quite dirty if I'm potting. And um, just a real quick little make that was. 
and that's the view there outside to the wildlife corner um, quite messy and unkempt at the moment but great for animals to shelter in over winter and I've already had a few little robin visitors making the most of it and also an emergency mirror because the amount of times I get dirt or something in my eye and I wear contact lenses and that's a right pain so yeah just a couple of a bits there so there you have it that's the big shed makeover pretty much done I mean there's a still a few things I want to do the paintwork in here is a bit patchy now that everywhere looks so fresh um, I still need to do the ceiling and a few other bits and pieces and the glass definitely need to clean that and get some pieces replaced but otherwise you know this is a whole new shed for me and I feel like I've just fallen in love with it all over again and when I think back to how long ago it was that I put it up as much as I wish that I've done this from the start I know that I didn't have the money to do that I was <laughs> only just graduated um, and also I think you know I wouldn't have known how I would have used the space that long ago so there's also that but you know overall in terms of cost I know I spent about £110 on the wooden materials and the hooks were probably about another £15 give or take and that's probably it in terms of what I definitely had to spend <laughs> I also bought those few other extra bits like the beautiful new metal trough um, yeah so that's how much I spent and I'm just like I said I'm in love with it I feels like a whole new shed to me and it's just going to keep me so much more organized I know where all of my tools are and it's gonna be a great place to hopefully shoot some videos as well um, so I'd love to know what you think have you got a shed that perhaps needs a bit of a tidying up um, let me know if you use any of these little tips and tricks in your own shed I'd love to hear from you in the comments thank you very much for watching I'll see you again next time time now I think for a celebratory cup of tea